if they could complete this investigation and determine, um, you know, what happened in this fire first before we use it as a basis to say, well, we should therefore do uh, anything in particular. And I don't think that investigation will be that long in coming and the results of it. And I'll look so I'll certainly look forward um, to uh, reviewing it uh, and to reviewing it with the fire officials and with uh, people in TCHC. And in the meantime, I just indicated a moment ago, I certainly want to reiterate to Toronto Community Housing how important it is on the regulations that do exist and the requirements that are in place at present uh, that we be doing better uh, than we have been doing to make sure that those regulations are followed as strictly as they possibly can be because safety is the paramount consideration. At a meeting last night, speakers said that uh, drivers have two enemies in the city. One's Uber and one is John Tory. Look, this is the price you pay when you're in a position in elected office where I'm the principal spokesperson for the city about how we're handling this issue. Um, and I regret the fact that they feel that way because I think a lot of it is uh, expectations that have been created by others that um, we couldn't possibly have met. The notion that, for example, that we could have been in court last week, whatever day it was, after City Council seeking an injunction and that the court hearing would be going on and possibly an injunction would be granted. I think anybody who has objectively examined the record on this, both in terms of past injunction applications and even asking any expert in the legal system, would confirm the advice of our solicitor, which is if we'd started an injunction application the day after the City Council meeting, we would be months away from being in court. And therefore, people who've been led to believe that would provide some instant solution to this were being misled. And, the, and I really regret that, because as I said the other day, I think that's cruel to create expectations among people who are struggling as to what you could do. The same holds true for our efforts with respect to law enforcement. We've laid hundreds of charges, but those hundreds of charges take weeks and months to get through the court system, and there's no guarantee you're going to be successful in those law enforcement applications. And so what are we doing? We're doing the third thing that is something you'd expect a responsible government to be doing, which is developing as quickly as possible a new set of rules that can be brought forward that will regulate Uber for the first time and, and regulate them in a way that is fair and equitable vis-a-vis -vis the taxi industry. I suspect that is going to result in some lessening of the regulatory burden on the cab industry. And so I think we're doing everything we can to handle, handle this matter in a responsible, balanced way. And I believe the people of Toronto agree with that, and I believe they understand understand the emotion that is attached to that in the cab industry, but they also understand we are doing everything we can as quickly as we can in the circumstances. And so I regret the fact they've personalized it to me and that there were things said in the council chamber and so on that really don't have any place in civilized uh, discussion about these kinds of things. But I understand the emotion, and so I just will have to sort of accept the fact that that goes with the territory in my job and that I will continue to deal with this issue as quickly as possible. And I hope you will help me by explaining to the public and to the cab industry, for example, that it isn't just a matter of our drafting something up, you know, in the middle of the night and sort of hurrying it forward and bringing it to City Council. We are required under the law to engage in a certain level of consultation when we bring forward a bylaw like that, and if we don't do it, the bylaw will then be struck down and we'll be no further ahead than we are today. I am trying to move this forward in a responsible, practical manner as quickly as possible, and I'm sorry that it's taking as long as it is, but that is the reality of the legislative process and the law as it stands in terms of how we have to do that. Well, first of all, uh, given the explanation I've offered, and I realize it was lengthy in front of you this morning about an injunction and what constraints there are there, uh, secondly, law enforcement, and thirdly, drafting of bylaws and the time that it takes to do that properly and to do it within the law, I would urge those who are suggesting there's something else we could do to come forward and tell us what they think that is. Because at the end of the day, I would say that those three tools are, as far as I know, the only tools the city government has to try and deal with Uber. You know, it's, it's in, an injunction, which we talked about at length last week. It's law enforcement, which we continue to do, and it's drafting the bylaws, which we're doing as quickly as possible and within the legal constraints that we face. And so I would just say those who think we should be acting faster to try and 
salvage a situation for them, which I realize is very difficult, I would invite them to come and tell us. I will tell you, and I've said this before, that oftentimes when we have them in to consult, the answer they have is, please ban Uber. And we have tried to indicate that whether it's here or in other cities, and I had a chance to be with some of my big city mayor colleagues last week, whether it was from Edmonton or Calgary or places where um, Uber has been present and dealt with in various different ways, and I can assure you that most of those are not in any way, shape or form trying to ban Uber. What they're doing is they are drafting bylaws like we've done. I heard in Miami last week they came forward with a similar sort of bylaw to Edmonton's. And that's what people are doing is in a practical uh, way trying to create a regulatory playing field that is fair and equitable equitable that brings Uber in and, 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 and has taxis regulated in a fairer manner. And that is exactly what I'm trying to do, lest anybody be under any misunderstanding. I acknowledge the fact that the present situation that taxi cabs face is unfair. I acknowledge the fact that the insurance requirements, of which they have very explicit ones, contrasted with the Uber people who have a murkier set of insurance requirements, is not fair. I acknowledge the fact that having inspections that have to be done for vehicles that are rigorous compared to more limited inspections done by Uber itself is not fair. That is what we're trying to fix, and we're trying to fix it as quickly as possible with a new draft bylaw. As far as other things my office can be doing, all we are doing is we've tried to communicate with the different elements of the industry to say to them, we are doing everything we can, please participate in the consultative process, and please don't uh, protest in this manner that uh, disrupts the city because uh, it, it, it is not going to speed up the process. And I happen to don't, uh, not to think, and it's just a personal opinion, it doesn't uh, enhance the reputation of the taxi industry or their cause. I think most people are saying, we think the city government is doing about all that it can as quickly as it can. Can we try and catch up a month on the thing? If it's possible, we will, and have the report come in March instead of in April. But I can assure you that Tracy Cook and her staff are working as hard as they can, flat out, to get this done because they recognize the fact it's an urgent issue, both from the standpoint of the livelihood of cab drivers and also from the standpoint of uh, trying to minimize, if not a